What's good y'all, it's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So I'm gonna check out 12 greatest number 30 entrants in the Royal Rumble history. Now there's been some great number 30s. Uh, there's also been some just mind confusing, question mark inducing number 30s where you think this is the last person of this year's Royal Rumble. You, it couldn't have been anybody else. Is this person really? Okay, so we're gonna check out some of the greats of the, uh, the the individuals that were able to pull number thirty. Appreciate all the love and support you guys showing on the channel. Once again, we're gonna be checking out a lot of Royal Rumble content for the rest of this week because uh, this year's Royal Rumble is right around the corner this Saturday. Looking forward to it. Should be a great time. Let's get right into this video. I'm ready, man. If it isn't lucky, number 27. Supposedly the actual best number to enter from to win the Royal Rumble match, or so we thought. Yeah, it turns out that lucky 27 had all its luck run out over 20 years ago, and since then, number 30 has indeed become the number to pull when it comes to winning the Royal Rumble. Not only has it yielded more winners than any other number, but it has yielded more memorable uh -huh. performances than any other number as well. Last uh -huh. week, we covered the number 30s that are memorable for the wrong reasons, but the Rumble is a joyous occasion and now it's time to reflect that. I'm Tempest Hailing from Parts Fun Known, and these are the 12 greatest number 30 entrants in Royal Rumble history. Number 12, Mr. Perfect, 1990. The 1990 Royal Rumble is the first great Royal Rumble, and its final entrant was perfectly adequate. The role of the final entrant in many of the early Rumbles was to serve as the final boss of the match for the conquering babyface to throw out last, and honestly, if it isn't going to be the winner, and it isn't going to be a surprise, that's a pretty good use of the spot. After two mildly successful Royal Rumbles, Hulk Hogan decided it was his turn to be the winner, and so he needed an adversary to stand in his way, and at the start of 1990, that would be his current rival, Mr. Perfect. Perfect runs quarterback with the heels as they try to unite to eliminate Hulk the Inevitable, mm -hmm. only for Perfect to accidentally on purpose eliminate Rick Rude before being thrown ass over tea kettle to the outside in the best elimination of the match. It may not be the all-timer of a performance we would see later, but for this time, as a number 30 entrant, this was absolutely acceptable. Yeah, it's fine. I'm not saying it. Moving on. Number 11, yeah. Seth Rollins, 2020 Men's. At the end of the brilliantly paced 2020 Men's Rumble was the arrival of the Monday Night Messiah, Seth uh -huh. Rollins. <laughs> Seth was feuding with about half the Raw roster at the time, and conveniently for all of us, those lads, namely Kevin Owens, Samoa Joe, and Aleister Black, were all in the ring when Rollins and the Monday Night Menagerie arrived. Seth isn't a number 30 that made it to the final two, or even the final four for that matter, but as soon as he arrived, the focus of the yep. match shifted to the threat of Rollins and his goons. A number 30 entrant just has to be important, and Rollins certainly qualified. And it, and that, it, it worked because he had all these people around him. You're like, uh-oh, he's going to cause some chaos. Seth Rollins, obviously a, a big noticeable name. And then everyone that's had history had beef with him. Most of them were in the ring. So it was one of those things where it's like, you know what? Now we can all jump them. <laughs> it, it, that worked. That's that's a good number 30 to have. Add in an attempted shield reunion, and you have yep. an incredibly effective use of the final live rumble pop we got for two whole years. Number 10, mm -hmm. Randy Orton, 2006. The 2006 Royal Rumble is a bit of a mixed bag, but little Rey Mysterio lasting from number two and having to overcome one last hurdle in the form of 2006 douchebag Randy Orton <laughs> is one of the greatest underdog performances in yeah. Rumble history. Orton aligns himself with former mentor and fellow bastard Triple H, yep. and while it may seem ridiculous that those two big muscle men with their combined might could not have eliminated one little Rey Mysterio, it is that adversity that makes makes Ray's victory that much more cathartic. Mm -hmm. Orton takes his time trying to win the match, AKA he f***ed around and finds out, but in doing so, he plays his role perfectly as the fresh man that stands in the beloved underdog's way. Yep. Good number 30. Number nine, Ted DiBiase. 1989. This the first number 30 was entry born. in Royal Rumble history was a good one, as the Million Dollar Man tried to buy his way to victory. Does <laughs> Makes it sense. work like that? Can you buy someone's ping pong ball? Who did he buy it from? Did they really care so little? The 1989 Royal Rumble was still a work in progress, and as a result, isn't terribly memorable outside of the progression of the Mega Power story, but the evil cartoon millionaire wrestler buying the best slot in the match <laughs> is just the kind of wackiness I want in my 80s WWF. Ted DiBiase's performance is quite good as well, Finishing as the runner-up with three eliminations, setting a very respectable standard for all number 30s to come. Number eight, 
Goldberg, 2004. Listen, I know the popular thing to do these days is hate Goldberg, but I'm sorry. When I see this man enter the 2004 Royal Rumble and run straight through yeah, Nunzio. Yeah, that I... shit was cold. This is before they started messing up his booking in my, you know, his, his second run in WWE. That first run, I enjoyed it. They still, they still mismanaged him. He should have won the championship as soon as he faced Triple H. Uh, well, no, I think it was in that uh, Elimination Chamber. He should have won the championship then um, when he was in the Elimination Chamber. But, you know, you know how that went. Um, they they still kind of misused him his first go-around. But I, I definitely enjoyed his presence and atmosphere. And in this Royal Rumble... Soon as he got in, he destroyed Nuncio. I mean, absolutely murdered him on live. Well, it wasn't live. Well, it was live, but you know, live television, pay per view television. Just killed him. One of the best Royal Rumble spots of all time. Love it. I just can't be mad at him. My lizard brain just gets activated when I see Goldberg wrestle. He doesn't win the 04 Rumble, nor does he come particularly close thanks to interference from Brock Lesnar. Uh -huh. But the two minutes that I spent watching Goldberg in the 2004 Rumble is the most I have felt alive all day. He spears Big Show, spears Billy Gunn, punch, 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 kill Nunzio dead, and then get eliminated. Yeah. That was due, and Goldberg made the most of his minutes. Yeah. Both of them. Number seven, Shayna Baszler, 2020 Women's. Charlotte Flair was always going to win a Royal Rumble match, but goddamn, should this have been Shayna Baszler's year? Yep. Straight out of NXT, where she had spent almost two straight years as champion, Shayna entered at number 30 and went on a rampage, yep. eliminating eight women in yep. under five minutes. Yep. Frustration over Shayna losing aside, she plays her role as the final boss of the Women's Rumble perfectly, arriving with all the aura of a main event superstar. Oh and unfortunately God. for her, she would never quite have this aura again. Because they are fucking stupid morons. Just, I'm sorry, I, I got a little carried away. It's just, Shayna Baszler deserves, she deserves so much. And it's so, it's like people don't care. And it sucks. And then it, the part of that is because of how they booked her over the years. They make you care a little bit and then they drop the ball with it. Oh my gosh. <sighs> Maybe because of the biting. It was probably because of the biting. But for these yeah. five minutes, Shayna was everything a great surprise number 30 should have been. Should have won, though. Number yeah. six, Trish Stratus, 2018, women's. The first ever women's Royal Rumble match needed a great number 30 to cement its place of as course. a proper match in WWE folklore. And I don't think there's anyone who could have fit that role better than Trish Stratus. For sure, That for might sure. be my Toronto bias coming out, but I don't care. Trish is a living legend, and her inclusion in this match alone makes it better. One of the issues with the first women's Rumble is that it's literally the first one. So many involved, including the Kelly Kellys, Tori Wilsons, uh -huh. and Michelle McCormick, Cools that were brought back to fill out the field kind of struggle with this style of match that they are very unfamiliar with. Trish Stratus, on the other hand, made the end of the match the best part. She reignites her rivalry with Mickey James. She teases mm -hmm. a match with Sasha Banks that we still may never receive. And yeah. above all else, she makes the first women's rumble feel special which it was. Number five, fair, fair, Triple fair, H, 2016. Fair Triple H winning the WWE Championship in the year of our Lord 2016 really should make me angrier than it does, but I just can't bring myself to hate this match or this performance. WWE does f the Roman Iron Man run to high heaven, but uh. the finish of this match with Triple H returning from his brutal beatdown at the hand of Roman Reigns in December to eliminate Roman, provide us with this excellent reaction gif, and have an awesome final stretch against Dean Ambrose to once again establish himself as the heel. And this was so good. Oh, this was so good. This was the crowd. Once Roman was gone, <clears throat> this, once again, they, the crowd wasn't supposed to cheer this, but they did because we didn't care for Roman's character. And when it was down to Triple H and Dean Ambrose, I'm getting goosebumps because I remember how awesome that was. I was like, this is it. The What they have right here, let's go with this. Let's, let's expound on this. And they did. They even had a match. I think it was called, was it WWE Roadblock or something like that? It was like a pay-per-view before the WrestleMania that year. And it was... Triple H versus Dean Ambrose in a great championship match. <clears throat> That's what they should have went with, bro. This shit was so good. <clears throat> and it started right here with them being 
the last two, them going at it to see who's going to be the new WWE champion and the crowd behind Dean as much as they could be behind him. Oh, this is so good, bro. Because of course everyone was going to cheer when he eliminated Roman was a perfectly logical piece of business. It isn't quite on the same level as the other number 30 winners we will get to, but it is close. It's like a B plus, like Triple H himself. Number four, China, 1999. Ooh, putting China one spot higher than Triple H does feel good, doesn't it? For over 20 <laughs> years, there was only one name on the list of women to compete in the Royal Rumble, and that was China. If you merely look at this entry on paper, it probably doesn't catch a whiff of this list. China racks up one elimination in the form of Mark Henry, but lasts only 35 seconds in the match before being eliminated by Steve Austin. And honestly, given the time this happened, they probably saddled Henry with that spot to try and humiliate him. But yeah. all of that doesn't really matter, does it? What does matter is China making history that is still talked about by fans and fellow wrestlers all these years later. Mm -hmm. Most of the people on this list, while great, would still require a bit of thought to remember the circumstances of their night as number 30, but not China. You say China in the Royal Rumble, and anyone who has seen a Royal Rumble video package will know exactly what you were talking about. Mm -hmm. And that, my friends, is what it means to be iconic. Number three, Cody Rhodes, 2023 men's. Oh, just a few years ago, the words Cody Rhodes Royal Rumble winner would have tasted like vinegar, but now it's a different story. A still unfinished story, but a different story nonetheless. <laughs> Some people criticized Cody entering at number 30, partially due to the number being used as the winning ticket more frequently in recent years, and partially because Gunther lasting from number yeah. one maybe didn't make Cody seem like the underdog he could have, but yeah. considering the reaction this match could have gotten if WWE fans had even the slightest hope that Sami Zayn could have been number 30, I think saving Cody for last when the fans know he's coming is a frankly brilliant move. Now that the boring stuff is out of the way, holy sh Cody and Gunther giving us the Royal Rumble final two of this generation was enough to make that, that was match the... an all-time Rumble Bro, on that its final own. Two Cody was, was great. the right winner, got five eliminations, and had to go through the adversity of the most physically dominant man in WWE today in order to get the title shot at Mania he wanted so badly. And for that- I would have put him like at right after Seth. Seth comes in, then it's him. I think, I don't remember, what number Seth was, if y'all remember, was it like 15 or something like that? Not sure. Seth came out, I would have had Cody. Because we know he was there. I just would have had Cody come out. That's it. I would have had Cody come out. Right after there. And then you go from there. Built from there. You still could have had Gunther be the last one. You could have had him be the last person still. And that's another threat he has to overcome. I would have did that. That he is in the top tier. However, he does have company. Number two, The Undertaker. Of course he has to be on this list. Giving us the Royal Rumble final two of the previous generation, here is Grave Digger Billy himself. The Undertaker winning the Royal Rumble in 2007 did a lot for the match to have him as a winner, yeah. but the manner in which he won was what made this not only one of the greatest number 30 mm -hmm. performances in the history of the Royal Rumble, but one of the greatest Royal Rumble matches in history, period. Facts. From the moment that gong hits, the complexion of the match changes, and before you know it, you have an excellent final four of rated RKO, Shawn Michaels, and the Dead Man. Uh -huh. All potential winners, but when Shawn is able to eliminate the bad lads, that's when this match truly reached yes. legendary status. <laughs> Keep in mind that Shawn and The Undertaker had not crossed paths once in the years since Shawn returned from retirement. Mm -hmm. All those years, with all that previous history, and then one sits up, the other yeah, kips, kips up, up. Yep. and then there were two. And, and so that, that, oh my, it's, that's, in my opinion, it's the greatest final two. We recently got a good one with Gunther and Cody because that was really good, but this was legendary. This is the greatest final two in Royal Rumble history, bro. I remember watching this like it was just, it was goosebump inducing. This is before we got their classic matches at WrestleMania. This is way before then. Oh, this was so fucking good. So began the mini match. Everyone knows this is the greatest final two in Royal Rumble history, yep. and I really can't overstate how yep. much I love this Rumble ending. As a performance, it's the greatest there has ever been out of a number 30 entrant. It yep. may be impossible to do better, but in terms of the greatest number 30 ever, I'm just not sure anything will ever surpass number one, John Cena, 2008. Yep. I mean, the surprise was- There we go. That, that makes sense. On the, the magnitude of it, I remember watching this live too, and I'm just like, once I heard his music hit, and and Jr. was like, you you gotta be kidding me, I, 
I couldn't believe it. I was like, wait, he's supposed to be out for a long how how? He actually got a huge pop at Madison Square Garden. And this is right around the time where people were tired of John Cena and he was able to give get a, a huge pop because no one thought he was gonna be there. It was so good, New York City forgot they hated this man. Thank Older you. Older members of our staff may disagree. L listen to that. Listen to that. Listen to that. Listen to that. Hey, I mean, listen the surprise was so good, New York City forgot they hated this man. The older members of our staff may disagree because of their inability to let go of their very understandable Cena hate, but this just is the Royal Rumble return. This is yeah. the Royal Rumble number 30. Every time there's a huge return from injury in a Royal Rumble, it's compared to this. Yeah. They just don't make them like this anymore. And to tell you the truth, they didn't make them like this beforehand either. At no point has there ever been another like John Cena yeah. who could return from a torn pack in less than four months. He four is months. not human. And his appearance in that's the 2008 the Royal Rumble may have- Less than four months and he was back in a, in the Royal Rumble. Like, bro. I've angered the anti Cena crowd of the time, but the surprise. This is the feeling that we are always chasing when we watch a Royal Rumble. When the clock counts down to zero for number 30, uh, yeah. we hope to feel this way again. I tip my cap to WWE, John Cena, everyone yeah. involved for managing to pull this off and set a bar so high that it may never be reached again. And that's our list. Please make sure that you just that's, that's a fair one. I can't even get mad at that. I can't even get mad at that. I mean, you can really change out one and two, but I think I think reason why he chose John Cena, the his thirty uh, his uh, number thirty entrance is because no one expected it to no one expected that to happen. No one thought John Cena was going to be back in enough time to be at the Royal Rumble from considering he came from a serious injury. That's what kind of probably elevated it, but. And as I want to say, in the sense of like sheer performance, oh, Undertaker wins that as the best number 30 entrant performance wise. Because when he came in, oh, it, it, it went to a whole nother level. But John Cena, shock wise, I can understand. Comment down below. Let me know your favorite number 30, uh, 30 entrant in the Royal Rumble. Um, if they weren't number one on this list um, for you, what's your favorite? of all time your favorite person who came in at number 30 in the men and women's royal rumble if they weren't listed on here or you know if they weren't higher up on your list on well, on this list but i appreciate all the love support you guys shown on channel road to 50k and i'm seeing you on the speedy youtube wrestling champion world appreciate y'all kicking it with me see you on the next one peace